Is a feasibility study mandatory for the repair, renovation, or purchase of a diplomatic or official residence pursuant to Government of Canada policies? Now you're testing me, but I would say if you're making a renovation, you would undertake an analysis like it would be a project, so you would do uh, the normal pre-project definition options analysis before you would get into okay. the actual implementation. So in relation to the existing property owned by the Government of Canada at 550 Park Avenue before the decision was made to purchase West 57th, was a, feasi was a feasibility study prepared in relation to that transaction? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. That would be something that GAC officials would be able to answer what they looked at in terms of the renovation okay. uh, cost. Can anyone on this panel uh, weigh in on that uh, answer? Anybody? No? Okay. So in your opinion, uh, Ms. Tatterstall, would it be GAC who's responsible for the creation of a feasibility study if one was done pursuant to policy? So yes, as the real property custodian, they would be responsible for uh, looking at any sort of options analysis before <coughs> undertaking a renovation. Thank you. I know that there is a talking point that the purchase of the new property is smaller, it was more economical for the taxpayer, but very, very light in terms of details. I know the current property, the new property, is just under 3,600 square feet. What was the square footage of the property on Park Avenue? Anyone have an answer to that? I don't know. Um, so, thank you, Mr. We, Chair, we, for this. Oh, thank sorry. You. Sorry, Mark. I, I'll you, defer Mr. to uh, my colleague, uh, Director General. Uh, go ahead, Linda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the speaker for the question. Um, <laughs> the uh, the subject pro uh, property at five 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 uh, five fifty Park Avenue was three thousand eight hundred and seventy three square meters. Three thousand eight hundred and seventy three. So the new property is around two hundred square feet or square meters less. Would that be your understanding? Correct. Okay. That's like a house. That is That's a very huge. interesting answer because according to GAC, there is um, a, a, an impression they're giving Canadians that this new move represented a saving opportunity of more than $2 million for Canadian taxpayers, that it would also reduce ongoing maintenance costs and property taxes and support future program needs. The new property has a carrying cost per year of $235,896 U.S., which is probably just under $400,000 Canadian per year. Specifically, taxes, $10,000 U.S. per month. Monthly common charges, uh, just under $9,600. U.S. dollars per month. Does anyone have any information with respect to the taxes and carrying costs on Park Avenue? Anyone? No, I don't have access to those. I don't think PSPC would either, but I would expect that when they did their life cycle cost analysis, that the, the operating costs of both properties would have been taken into consideration. The annual cost for this new property is more, and we just heard one of our colleagues from Fredericton, New Brunswick, is more than the actual purchase price of properties in her hometown. Do you not think this is a real problem with the Government of Canada, that the taxpayers, we are paying out over $400,000 Canadian per year just to allow Justin Trudeau's buddy to live in luxury in Manhattan? Is that acceptable to you as a taxpayer? Not only are you civil servants, you're taxpayers. Is that acceptable to you? So again, what I would say is that the official residence is acquired to support a mission in New York. So the requirements for that would be established by GAC pursuant to their legislation. So they acquire that to 
achieve their mission results in New York. So um, I don't have anything further than I can Sky's the limit, that. I guess, so long as it meets the mission's needs. That's, no. that's what I'm hearing as a taxpayer. No. So long as it meets the mission needs, it is, the cost be damned. So consistent with Treasury Board policy, it is a balance. Best value is a balance between the real property meeting the operational requirements with the cost of the acquisition and the maintenance over the life cycle of the asset. Thank you very Those much. Those are the questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Jory, do finish up, please.